Hi there, I'm James Brown and welcome to my uh, video blog. Uh, over the next few weeks and months, I'm gonna be sharing with you my thoughts, feelings, and occasionally controversial views on magic, pickpocketing, and hypnosis. Uh, for this very first one, I just wanna start by talking about hypnosis in a very broad sense. You see, my problem with hypnosis has always been in the process. This idea of a, a collection of rules, regulations, and limitations that tell me you know, how hypnosis works and what I need to do to achieve hypnosis. And growing up and learning about hypnosis from you know, textbooks, uh, uh, you know, later on YouTube, if I'm entirely honest, uh, gave me the opportunity to see a lot of different skills out there from a lot of different people. But I, I realized that I didn't believe in the process. In fact, I, I've never really believed in the process. This idea that we're inducing something, that there is almost an undertone of, of something magical going on. You know, a lot of people believe that the, the process itself is what's doing it. You know, I need, to, uh, I need to induce hypnosis. And to induce hypnosis, I need to have, uh, you know, this, this moment of pattern interruption where I bypass the critical faculty and I speak to the unconscious mind. It all sounds, it all sounds a little airy fairy, doesn't it? Let's be honest with ourselves. It all sounds a little bit magical, a little bit mystical. You know, trying to give rhyme and reason to something that, when explained in those terms, just doesn't seem to make sense. You know, the idea that, you know, somebody can reach for a handshake and by missing the handshake, we can somehow trip the mind to enter this highly suggestible state where we can give this suggestion and then they go down into a hypnotic trance. I mean, I'm, I've made up rubbish for a living as a, as a magician and, and if I'm honest, that this all kind of sounds a little bit like the yarn that a magician would spin or at least an entertainer would spin. And, and there's where I, I think the problem begins, that hypnosis and such things I've really been born out of an entertainment perspective. You know, when the first people used what we might now refer to as hypnosis, many centuries ago, no doubt, you know, they weren't doing it to enhance medical uh, knowledge or, or to, uh, to cure people's psychological woes. They were doing it to deceive you. And I think that the foundation of all these things is that deception. The problem is today, we can't necessarily determine what is based on that deception and what is in fact the truth behind hypnosis and what's actually going on. Audibly, that probably sounded really weird going through the tunnel, but you know, we have to live with these things. Recorded live, even the nasty bits are going to be left in, folks. So, lost my train of thought as well. So this idea of, uh, Think about hypnosis in the, in the sense of a collection of suggestions, that absolutely everything is about suggestion. Everything that you do, everything that you say, has a, uh, an associated suggestion in the way that you want the person to think and feel and believe. So if you look at it from that point of view and think that your job is about giving good suggestion, and that obviously has to include uh, the rapport that you've built, the intent, the expectancy, all of that is part and parcel of giving good suggestion that you now engage their imagination, you encourage them not to just think about what you said, but to, to feel it, to experience it completely. And if they are experiencing it completely, then to allow their imagination to turn that experience into something that happens to them. And here's the real key. I suggest that all hypnosis is simply the, the, the subject acting, pretending to do or be something but they perceive it as happening to them. Think about it like somebody with a phobia, uh, like spider phobia. You know, the person, the, their muscles tense up, they feel sick, they jump on a chair, they scream. They, they experience it as if it's out of their control, as if it's happening to them and beyond their will. But who else is doing it if it's not them? You see what I'm saying? They're, they're doing it themselves, but they are perceiving it to happen to them. And I would suggest this is all that's going on in hypnosis. A suggestion is given, the imagination is, is allowed to bloom and blossom, 
and a belief takes place that the person thinks to themselves, I can't do anything about this. It is happening to, to, to me. It is against my will. And now you have a phenomena of hypnosis. And if you think about it from a therapy point of view, that's where the, the client is already a lot of the time. Whatever their psychological problem, whatever the thing that is controlling them is, the problem occurs because they think it's happening to them, that they think that they have no control over it at all. So here's the irony. If you're a therapist, you want to take what they are doing to themselves, but thinking it's happening to them, and you want to give them the power and the control back. If you're doing it for entertainment, you want to paint a nice picture that allows their imagination to create that automation for them. And once they believe it, once they accept it as true, it will be their reality. No process, no need for anything else. Now you can spend your time thinking about how you can encourage their imagination. What do I say? How do I say it? Let's use all my communication skills. Let me use my, my vo voice tone, my, uh, my language itself. Uh, everything I can to create belief for that person. And if that's what you're doing, be really careful about this ambiguous language and this clever um, sort of uh, acrobatic language stuff that a lot of hypnotists do these days. The whole point of this is it's got to be something that the person can understand so you can fuel their imagination and their mind's automation of their imagination, which ain't going to happen if they don't know what you're talking about. So be real cautious. What I'm suggesting is freedom. Freedom from having to follow rules and restrictions and formula. Freedom to focus on the customer, focus on the client. You know, use your skills to, to enhance their imagination. You don't need all of this process. The person doesn't need to close their eyes if you don't want them to. They certainly don't need to feel in a weird hypnotic state and freak out. You can choose how that person responds to your suggestion. And I tell you this, from personal experience, there is nothing that can't be done with a person's eyes wide open, feeling totally normal, yet following your instructions to the letter, that can be done with somebody who is in a trance-like state. Okay? Um, rambling over. Uh, I've got other things to talk to you about. Uh, I've got other places to walk. I've got other scenery to show you. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, be life, be love, and be free. And until next time, cheerio.